Hello, welcome. We're going to do another landscape in charcoal. This one is going to be a little bit smaller and a little bit simpler. Let's start. First, we're going to do a simple sketch with a graphite pencil. I'm going to be drawing an overhanging rock with a valley and some mountains in the distance. I'm working on a smaller size paper this time. I'm using a Fibriano sketching paper. It's around 6 times 8 inches or so. And it's going to be a slightly smaller charcoal sketch. Now my reference is going to be in the description. And uh, the first thing I'm th that I'm going to do differently than the references, I'm going to uh, draw these mountains in the background a little bit higher. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want the light side of the rock to stand out against the darker background. And to have that darker background I need to move those mountains up a little bit. So to change the point of view or the angle of view a little bit. And I'm going to add some more distant mountains here on the left just to make the landscape more interesting. Now I'm going to put down some charcoal powder. I just make some charcoal powder by sharpening one of my woodless charcoal pencils or uh, charcoal sticks. And the first thing I do is I move the charcoal dust around so that I can distribute it evenly with a brush. I don't try to push it in. And once it, it's distributed evenly then I start blending and pushing it in uh, with a piece of paper towel. And I just uh, use a circular motion and I blend gently. You can see how even and smooth this looks. I can just go over it one more time with a larger round brush. I'm going to draw a few light clouds. They're going to be very inconspicuous, barely there, but still something to make the scene a bit more interesting, or to make this top part of the scene a bit more interesting. I use a combination of a pencil eraser and a kneaded eraser for that one. And now I'm going to start working on these hills or these mountains in the distance. And for that I'm going to use a piece of willow charcoal. So this is just a piece of uh, a willow charcoal stick. It's a soft natural charcoal. It's going to be easy to blend and move around, as you can see. I'm just blending it with a soft synthetic brush. I mostly use flat brushes, but I use two types. The softer synthetic brush and the harder bristle brush. They have slightly different effects, so I would like to try to use that to my advantage. So these distant hills or mountains, whatever they are, these distant peaks, they don't need to be very well defined and they need to be lighter because I'm trying to imitate the atmospheric effect. So all of the peaks in the distance will be getting lighter and lighter and less and less defined in terms of detail and texture and things like that. I'm sketching around the shape of this overhanging rock and the bottom side of it is going to be much darker because it's facing down, it's facing away from the light source so that's the shadow area 
here to the right we're going to have some trees in the distance but I'll, I'll get to that later first I want to shade this larger area this whole mountain slope and the, uh, the mountain peak to the right and of course I want this one to be a bit darker than the one on the left to make it look even more even, I even used a little bit of charcoal powder and mixed that in uh, with the um, with the willow charcoal that I previously laid down. And now I'm just going to blend. By the way, I forgot to mention uh, in terms of the other materials I'm using. I'm going to be working with charcoal pencils. I'm going to use Master Touch woodless charcoal pencils and I'm going to use two grades, medium and soft. But as you can see in this initial stage I'm still working mostly either with charcoal powder or willow charcoal. And again I'm blending with a piece of paper towel so that this can look really smooth using a small circular motion until I get it to look smooth because I don't want any texture and I don't want much uh, variation or suggestion of detail in there and the reason for that is because all of that is in the background so it needs to be less detailed and it, it can't be distracting from the elements in the foreground uh, I'm going to draw some trees here to the to the left. I don't really have these in my reference but I decided to throw a few trees here a few coniferous trees like a one that is a little bit further away which is why it's going to be smaller and one that is quite a bit closer to our viewpoint so I'm going to make it taller and more detailed. First I'm going to draw the tree trunk and then I'm going to draw some branches on the side and then uh, once I have that basic shape and the structure in place I'm going to draw some foliage and when I say foliage I mean clusters of needles obviously because these are coniferous trees. So I'm going to add a little bit more of those because I want these darker shapes to stand out against the lighter background. I think it will make for a very nice contrast and also because I have some trees above that rock uh, that's going to make for a nice contrast with the rock because the light side of the rock is going to be a lot lighter than the shadow side and it's going to be a little bit lighter than the background. In fact, I think the light side of the rock will be pretty much one of the lightest elements in the scene in addition to the sky, of course. Now i gotta, I got to add some details to the rock. I gotta define its shape a little bit better and to do that I'm just gonna try to draw some indications of smaller shapes, smaller rocks, cracks and things like that. And Sometimes I will just make an indication that there is a crack there by drawing a line and sometimes I will draw a slightly larger, darker shape to indicate that this is a shadow area and that the part of the rock above it is either protruding or is facing up towards the light source which is why it's lighter and uh, you don't want to cover everything evenly like make the, the, the shadow area 
completely black. You want to leave a little bit of texture in there because when you leave a little bit of texture you will get some random shapes that you didn't even plan to make. And that's a good thing because it will make the shape of the rock even more complex. So just allow those happy accidents to happen and uh, you will come up with, with some interesting shapes. You don't have to stick to the reference photo because the reference photo is just there to give you an idea or an inspiration. Another thing that you'll notice if you compare the reference uh, with my drawing is that I've changed the angle or the position of the rock. It was kind of pointing a little bit too much vertically towards the sky. I wanted it a little bit flatter, more horizontal. So I changed the angle a little bit. I changed the mountains in the background and I added some trees. I think <clears throat> on one hand, I am simplifying what I see in the reference, so it's not going to look as detailed or as realistic. Uh, but on the other hand, I am enhancing it because I am uh, adjusting the composition to my liking and adding some elements that I find uh, make the scene more interesting. So I think that's what the process of drawing our landscape is all about. You don't have to stick to the reference, but you know, sometimes you can like a uh, reference photo a lot and you, you want to stick to it, or you want to make something that looks as close to it as possible. So, in this shadow area, which is already fairly dark, I'm going in with a soft charcoal pencil and adding in some even darker areas, like some darker cracks. Those are going to be the darkest details on my drawing. Because I want these to stand out not just against the lighter area, I want them to stand out against the shadow area as well. Now there are some benefits to simplifying the shadow areas sometimes, but sometimes you want to add a few suggestions of smaller details in there as well. But you don't have to do too much because a few suggestions of those cracks and smaller lighter shapes in there that will give the viewer an impression like they're looking at a really uh, rough uh, rugged terrain a rough uneven shape. I'm going to draw some grass and bushes here in the foreground in front of that rock and you can see that I divided this rock into two smaller shapes there's another one um, to the left, just under it, kind of bulging out, but a little bit less than, than the one that is in the middle of the scene. I'm cleaning up the top edge a little bit so that it would stand out against the background, and then randomly pink, uh, picking off some lighter shapes in the shadow area. Whenever I do that, what I what I achieve with that is the I make some smaller shapes feel like they're protruding from the shadow area and catching more light from the light source. <clears throat> On the right side, we're going to have another slope which is closer to the foreground and it's going to be covered with trees. But I'm just uh, doing a little bit more work on the left and now I'm going to have to do those trees on the right. So I'm not going to uh, do too much in terms of defining them. Like I'm not going to draw every single tree or every single individual canopy, but rather I'm going to try to draw something that kind of looks like a bunch of trees, a lot of canopies bunched together. And to do that, I'm just going to produce a texture that looks like foliage. Now here at the bottom, I tried experimenting a little bit with a pencil eraser, and I'm using a Kohinoor pencil eraser for erasing, in addition to the kneaded eraser. 
I tried draw drawing some details at the foot of the mountain, like maybe some paths or something. I didn't really like how they turned out, so I decided to soften them a little bit with a brush and to decide what I'm going to do with them a little bit later. After that, I went over this light side of the rock very gently, barely touching, just dragging uh, my pencil over it to add some random texture and detail to it. It made it, it, it made it a little bit darker, but it's still a lot lighter than the shadow side. But it gave it, it, gave it some unpredictable texture here and there, and I, now I think it looks a lot more realistic. That's one of the things I often like to do. I like to just drag my pencil over the surface of the paper and allow it to produce some random detail. That's what I call allowing the pencil to work for me. Because when you have that texture, you have something that will entertain and confuse the eye and make it look like, make it feel like they're looking at something really detailed that I've spent hours working on, when in fact you can draw something like this in under an hour. <coughs> Now I'm putting in a little bit more work on these trees on the right, at the bottom. And what I'm doing is, in addition to the, drawing the texture, I'm also uh, staying in some areas a little bit more and adding a bit more value. Basically I'm creating the shadow areas by adding more marks or uh, more of the material to some of the areas. That's another way to create areas of darker value. The other way is to use a darker pencil, which in my case is a soft charcoal pencil. They are both pretty dark, both the medium and the soft charcoal pencil. But the soft charcoal pencil is a little bit darker. You can use that for those pitch black areas. This is already, this group of trees is already starting to look a little bit more like a group of canopies as I'm trying to separate them with these shadow areas and make it look like a bunch of smaller shapes rather than one huge blob. Now here in this um, middle part of the scene I didn't really like those pencil stro uh, strokes with a pencil eraser. I initially created, so I decided to create some suggestions of some smaller um, slopes and smaller uh, hills covered with forest. So I used a piece of willow charcoal for that. Just created some vertical shapes and then I dabbed on those lightly with a brush and you can see that I'm getting something that that is actually giving the mountain a more complex look like there are smaller shapes in front of that mountain and I think now we have more of a feeling of depth this looks more like a valley with um, with taller and taller uh, hilltops I need to finish these corners where the tape uh, was holding the uh, the paper in place and I'm just going to draw a little bit more of the treetop here on the left. <clears throat> the drawing is mostly finished. I'm just going to make some uh, final changes, final modifications. I didn't really like the shape of this peak and I'm just gonna modify it slightly here. I used some willow charcoal again and then I blended it in with a brush. Don't forget to give me a like or subscribe and also comment and let me know what you think. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to check out my other videos.
I'm gonna put my signature in the lower right corner it's gonna be very inconspicuous barely visible for longer videos more content full-length narrated videos you should check out my patreon that's it for now thanks for watching I'm gonna see you in the next one bye for now